So we got we have somebody links from I, we, I think they're from uh, New York City. If I'm not yes. mistaken. Well, I'm not sure. I think that this is one of your contacts. I'm not I sure, see? but I love the Brown Eyes Company. Brown Eyes Company. Right. Paul Johnny. Paul Paul Johnny, and she smiled. I see you back there smiling, Paul Johnny. Hey, Paul Johnny. Oh my God, I love it. It's beautiful. Now I'm wait. The, the yeah. first, the first order of business is: Did I pronounce your name correctly? No, but it's okay. That's why most people call me DJ. Uh, and she said it so eloquently. She's like, no. no. <laughs> I'm so used That's to right. it. Okay, good. Then I'm not. Oh, well, how do you name it? Well, I pronounce it Pajani Flurry. Pajani, um, my mom pronounces it a little bit differently, but it's a whole story. And it is, I could have wrote a book about that in itself. <laughs> Pajani. Uh, so, so like yeah, but you're not going to go against mommy and, and just say your name the way you want to say it. We got to say it the way mommy wants to say it, okay? Because she's the one naming yeah, so it. How does your mother say it? Pujani. Oh, that's even better. I like it. See, that, that's what we got to go with mommy. We like that better. It's the yeah, Pujani. It makes me feel like I'm not from here. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Is that what? real? It's not, even though we are um, Haitian. If you know anything about Haitian families, they just love interesting names. So it's actually a Hindu name. Oh, wow. I love it, honey. They should have named me that because who would tell me that? I'd be like, oh, my name is Pujani. And I would be so like, Wait, you know what? She done took emphasis in the front and put it in the back. And then, and then what? She done changed the name. Listen, Pujani. you wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. I wouldn't be able to fit in the door. I'd be like, you know what? How about you work for Renee? Renee. Yeah, do something for Renee. <laughs> Renee Taylor. Pujani, Pujani, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to have you on the virtual black business called the Writer's Block Edition. Yes. So we're going to let you go forth and share about yourself, share about your books, any anything you've written, uh, your business. Just tell us all your business. That's all. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so Good much you. for having me. Um, I, this writer's block edition um, is kind of like a new role for me because I started off as a publisher. Um, in 2007, I saw that there was an opening in the market that you know I could fill. Um, I looked at the different magazines and things like that that were being offered to me. I actually got a call to get some magazines. And I noticed it wasn't one that really spoke to me in my lifestyle. So I created it. I created Brown Eyes Magazine in 2007. And so I worked with tons of writers, of course, as a publisher um, and as a small business owner, just starting out, I did a lot of the things myself. I wore all of the different hats. So one of my hats was the editor in chief of um, the publication. So I was always being um, in a position to read writers work and critique and edit and be, and things like that. And I worked with a great editor one time. Um, she actually came on as an intern, but she was like so advanced that she really just came on to help me out. And she told me um, that writing is really a process that you write and then you rewrite and then you rewrite and then you rewrite. <laughs> and if you need to rewrite again. And so I began to understand how to write and what makes a good writer and it helped me to be a good editor. So all this time I was um, doing the editor in chief thing, doing the publishing thing. And it's, it's a long journey, um, but I've been able to work with amazing um, publications. I've co-published. I um, have done event planning for the publications. We do a monthly event. Well, when everything was you know, normal, we would do a monthly event, promote the magazines. And you know, I've really had an interesting life. And in the midst of all of this, actually before I even started the magazine, I had an idea. It was a simple little idea because I was running from one place to the, to the next as a young person just graduating college. And I came upon a situation where you know, just, you know, sometimes um, they say necessity is the mother of innovation. It is so true. So I had to get from one thing to the next. And I had a long day and I had a choice whether to wear a full panty. So I'm getting into um, the, the good parts here, guys. 
So I was running to this place and I had to make a split second decision. I had to decide whether I was going to wear these pants that is just, you know, made from a material that would just show every and any panty line like known to women. And I really want to be comfortable for the day. And I didn't want to have to wear, you know, um, these like frilly panties. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to wear the granny panties and be comfortable for the day. And then I thought, you know, would be great. It'd be great if we had a convertible panty. You know, women, we do so many things. We're the multitaskers of the planet. Like that is our thing. And there's not enough versatility for underwear. So ladies underwear, we have the convertible bra and that's awesome. So I thought about a convertible panty. And so if you are going from one thing to the next, all you have to do is take off the back piece of this panty and you have yourself a nice little sexy dub. I'm not gonna, you know, do too much about that because you know, I don't know what type of form if there's 18 or younger on this <laughs> that's gonna see this, but just that little demonstration, you can see um, that these panties are convertible and I put them together with um, four different bags so you can interchange them, right? And so I was so green to business and, you know, certainly inventing. I really didn't know what to do, where to go. But when I did the research at the time in this country, they were not offering fashion patents. It was only in Europe. And so it took me on this wild, crazy journey as I'm, you know, having my business, as I am, you know, going through, you know, regular life stuff, starting my family and things like that. I really had to come to a place where I had to really say, okay, what am I going to do with this? Okay. This is a great idea. You know, I know it would help so many women. What am I going to do? And just being a spiritual person, I put myself in a position to be open to receive. And I received so much great inspiration. So many people like randomly come to my life, you know, and, and helping me. And I finally got to a point where I could put this product out and I became patent pending with my product. And I even got to a space where I could call myself an inventor. And I, I wasn't there, right? I was, a, I'm a publisher, you know, I'm, I'm in my lane and I know I know that lane. I know publishing, I know writing, you know, I'm a, I'm a bookworm, I'm a, you know, intellectual, I'm not a fashion person, right? So I was blessed to get the support that I needed to bring this product to market. And, you know, I was getting closer to that goal. And I kind of had some reservations because I'm an Israelite, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the conscious community. You know, we, we, we value ourselves on, you know, conservatism and um, being reserved and all these great things. And I'm like, how am I going to sell these things? Like, what am I, you know, going to do? Is it going to hurt my brand? Is it going to hurt my identity? And I sought um, direction from my colleague circle. And one of my colleagues encouraged me. She said, you're an inventor, PJ. Okay, please share that with the world. And she just gave me so much inspiration, so much validation, so much encouragement that I actually started to get to, to get to my to the space where I could say that I'm an inventor, to really embody what it means to be a creative on that level. And so I'm I'm going through the motions, you know, I'm feeling all good. I'm an inventor, you know, inventor PJ, that's me. And one day I met a young lady named Kendra. And we had just started, you know, we just met. So she didn't know me that well. She didn't know what I did at, at all. And um, we came upon a situation and I said, you know, it would be great if um, somebody made this product. As a matter of fact, that, that's really good. What do you think about this, Kendra? Would you buy something, you know, like this if it was on the market? And she turned to me and said, well, yeah, but who's going to invent that? You? And it was a really poignant moment in my journey because I, it took, you know, and I explained this in my book, who's going to invent that? you. 
a journey of courage and lessons for every inventor. Because people don't realize that inventors or you know publishers, writers, creators, we're sensitive. We're sensitive about our stuff. And so to be able to open up to people and ask their opinion, sometimes you know, it, it means the world to us that people might receive it well, or it could crush us if, if you don't. And I and I really muse over that that situation that happened because it's like she doesn't know that I am an inventor. I could be an inventor and I could just have a great idea and want to bring it to market, you know? And so I want people to understand that it's okay to dream big and it's okay to encourage other people to dream big. Nothing is impossible. If there's anything 2020 has shown us is that nothing is impossible. And even prior to that, you know, we are a great people. We are a people, a highly creative people. So if, someone in your community says, I want to invent, you know, something that's going to, you know, give us electricity for free for the next hundred years, encourage them. Find out more about what they're doing. You know, don't let that be one side of the story. And so in my journey, I just felt it as at one of those points where I was tested and I passed the test <laughs> because I have become patent pending with my product and I'm so excited to bring it to market. You could go to lunalaneclothing.com um, to check out the convertible panties. We have um, some other clothing brands there too. And I'm just so excited to bring this book out as well to encourage other inventors, um, to encourage other creators who wanna do something amazing and they don't know where to go they don't know what to do they don't know the next step they don't know um really how to navigate a plane that they don't know anything about and that's where i was but with hard work determination a great support system all those things came together to get me to this point and i if i could do it anyone can do it okay it is not a matter of if you have the capital, if you have, you know, the the right, they say, you know, it's who you know. It's not about that. It's about your will. It's about whether or not you want to succeed. And if you want to succeed, you have a great idea and you think that it's something that you is worth pursuing and you have the energy and the frame of mind, the, the winning frame of mind to make it happen, you can there is nothing that is impossible, especially for our people, especially in this day and age with so many resources at our disposal. So um, that's what my book is um, about. It is an, it's an informative memoir because there are lessons in there for every inventor, as I um, explained in the title. Again, who's going to invent that? You, a journey of courage and lessons for every inventor. And this is a promo that I've put together um, so it's going to be available. So this is the pre-launch. It's going to be available on Amazon, Apple Books, and in paperback. So if you go to my website, you can pre-order it now. Um, and my website is pajaniflurry.com. Pajaniflurry.com. <laughs> okay. And I know it's a difficult name. It's there on the bottom. Um, pajaniflurry.com. Um, to find out, you know, everything that I'm doing about the magazines, about my product, um, about my book and, and my journey. And being that I'm patent pending and I am going, you know, for full patent status, I still have a lot of, you know, climbing to do. I call it uh, my journey to the moon. And so my, my blog and my um, podcast is called Enchanté. And I live a very enchanting life. Um, I mean, from just doors being open that I never thought would be open for me, just opens with ease. And I am always amazed when those things happen. So it's a very enchanting experience that I live. And I invite you to experience it with me and maybe get a few you know, moments of inspiration along the way. But thank you so much for listening to me. Shout out to the virtual black business crawl. I'm so happy to be a part of the forum. <laughs>
Yes, John. Oh my goodness, you are just amazing. I'm just trying to figure out what I can ask you. I mean, you definitely gave us so much information, so many good tips about your journey. First of all, I am so impressed because I was like, wait, those are panties. And that's why I had to excuse Mr. Dell. Uh, I don't know how that was going to go off with him talking about panties. I was like, oh no. I'm so used to it now. <laughs> But when I tell you, I'm so impressed. First of all, I love the hot pink and the neon. And we were just looking, we were talking about all oh, the neon strip and then we understood because it's convertible. That is genius. And then the fact that you said that this person, this woman that you just met said, well, who's going, you know, kind of smug, who's going to invent that you? And look at your brand, that is amazing. So tell us about what, how long did it take you after that conversation? Cause you know, sometimes, we'll get a vision, God will give us a vision, or somebody will speak into our lives and we're resistant to it, or maybe we don't believe it, we can't see it yet. How long did it take you and what steps got you to the point where you're like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to brand this, right? You say patent pending, so I love that you spoke about that because I do want to expand upon it. But what was that moment for you? What was that like for you to get to the next step of not just think, believe but now do and that is all about um that's what the book is about this tumultuous journey i mean it was um so the first part of the book is the downward spiral because <laughs> i went all the way down and then the second half of the book is the upward spiral when one day i just decided to change my life um, in terms of how I was dealing with life challenges, because everybody deals with life challenges. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, you might feel it a little bit more because you don't have a boss or a supervisor to go and talk to and say, you know, hey, you, this um, person didn't want to get an ad and they turned me down. And, you know, what am I going to do next? Because, you know, I needed that piece to, to, to complete this issue. You don't have anyone. And I don't think enough people really understand how hard it is to be an entrepreneur. The walk is crazy. And if you don't have thick skin, it can break you. And so with trying to um, get to a place where I could release this product and, you know, be comfortable with talking about it, comfortable with, you know, letting people know that it, it, it's my brainchild. And, you know, having this business, I became a mom, I'm a, you know, wifepreneur, daughterpreneur. I have so many different things um, that are on my shoulders. And I really had to understand how to manage those things and still be happy, still have a clear vision for success. And it all came from a very um, amazing spiritual transformation um, that happened for me last year. And I was very committed to it because I understood at a certain level that I had to have a strong spiritual foundation to weather the storm. Without it, you know, I was just, uh, I was just that spiral, you know, and I'm still spiraling, but I'm spiraling up because it, uh, it's a whirlwind. It's a journey, you know, so many unexpected things happen, twists and turns. And so right when I made that, that um, commitment, to strengthen myself spiritually is when I was able to say, okay, I'm going to do this. Wow. That is amazing. As you just spoke to all of the, the first of all, the downward trial and then the upward. And I love that because you were just speaking about this off camera about how we see the finished product. You know, our society now, we're looking at social media, we're looking at an image, just an image, just an uh, instant in a person's life, not knowing the journey, not knowing how they got there, not knowing the pitfalls and like you said, the challenges and obstacles. So I love that you even, you speak to that. But even more importantly, I love that you talked about a foundation. And I was just about to ask you, who is your greatest supporter? Now, of course we know that your faith grounds you and your spirituality grounds you. And I think that's really important to say, but also if there's anyone, a physical being, someone that's in your life now, or even someone that maybe, maybe they're no longer here, but you are always trying to still make them proud or honor their legacy, like myself, you know, honoring the, the legacy of my father. Who is that person for you? Both 
my parents, you know, I'm so blessed to have both of my parents still with me. And um, as much as they do for me, I do for them. It's um, a lot of people are amazed of the relationship that I have with both of my parents. And, you know, even now my mom has my son and, you know, my dad is just always like, what can I do? How can I help you? Um, just a bounce, just a bounce ideas off of him. And he's um, been an accountant um, for many years. So that also helps. You know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. Well, that is amazing. You have been a delight, a wealth of knowledge. I, I can't wait to connect with you outside of this and look forward to everything that you're doing and, and maybe get some, you know, I don't know, I might need the granny hat panties, the ones that are a little larger, but still you could be sexy in whatever skin you're in, whatever size you're in. I want that women to know that or anybody that's watching that body consciousness and body image and just having a good, strong, healthy body image is so amazing, despite whatever size you're in. So I love that. I love your business. Tell us again where you're from and where the people can find you and find this beautiful product. Thank you so much. Let you know we do have plus size. We have a wide array of plus sizes, of course. And so you can go to Luna Lane Clothing dot com and so that's luna like the moon l u n a lane l a n e clothing dot com luna lane clothing dot com for um these wonderful convertible panties um and like i mentioned um some other great um products um brands that we have on there and for the book and for myself to um follow my blog ashante and to find out more about the magazines how you maybe you could place an ad or subscribe, you go to my website, pajamiflurry.com, and you know, just look at the name there and put the dot com. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Pajami. Thank you for joining thank us. You. And we look forward to um, connecting with you later and all the best. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everybody that's been tuning in to the virtual black business crawl. We are live on set as you can hear. We're going to in a minute. We're gonna go downstairs with our correspondent to see what's going on. Live entertainment, music, poets, po 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 vendors. There's so much going on. But um, for those that are just watching, I'm Renee Taylor, and I am here celebrating my virtual book tour and pre-launch of Letters to My Father, Seven Steps to Healing from a Loss of a Parent. And while you're here, for those that are just joining in, we're going to go ahead and run this trailer and then come back so that we can read an excerpt from the book because it's really important. Let us to my father. So here it is, our trailer. Stay tuned.